Grace and peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We gather today in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to give thanks for the life of Cecilia Ann Schumann and to receive the comfort of the Holy Spirit and to proclaim the good news of eternal life in Jesus Christ. Our first scripture reading is John 14, verses 1 through 6. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And our second scripture reading is Romans chapter 8, verses 31 through 39. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accepted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I would now invite you to stand if you are able, and we will sing together the hymn in the garden, and you'll find the words in the bulletin. seated. (laughs) 
Let us pray. Eternal God, maker of heaven and earth, you formed us from the dust of the earth, and by your breath you gave us life. We glorify you. Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life, you tasted death for all humanity, and by rising from the grave you opened the way to eternal life. We praise you. Holy Spirit, author and giver of life, you are the comforter of all who sorrow, our sure confidence and everlasting hope. We worship you. To you, O blessed Trinity, be glory and honor forever and ever. God, our creator, you are ever more ready to hear than we are to pray. You know our needs before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Show us now your grace that as we face the mystery of death, we may see the light of eternity. Speak to us once more your solemn message of life and of death. Help us to live as those who are prepared to die. And when our days here are ended, enable us to die as those who go forth to live, so that living or dying, our life may be in Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Our third scripture reading is Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 through 4. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now again, stand if you are able and let us sing together Amazing Grace, which is hymn number 280. May be seated. We are gathered here today for two reasons. First, we come to remember and celebrate the life of C.C. Schumann. Second, at such a time as this, we need to remind ourselves of the hope that we have because of our Lord Jesus Christ and the reality of the resurrection. 
when a loved one such as Cece has lived her life on earth and has now passed on to the resurrection, we remember. And you will remember how her life has intertwined with yours. You'll remember funny things and sad things, big things, and the many, many little things that happened in her life that strengthened the relationship that you had with her. Unfortunately, I did not get a chance to know Cece, but I'm sure that those of you who did have many rich memories. And the greatest moments of life are those we spend with the people we love who loved us. And you'll hold those memories close for the rest of your lives. And with those memories, we do have a sense of loneliness and sorrow. And of course we do, because Cece was well loved, and of course we miss the people that we love. And it faces, makes us face the tragic side of death. Because not only do we mourn Cece, but we're confronted with the knowledge that each one of us will someday face death ourselves. And there's no answer, easy answer, to why we have to die and why we have to watch our loved ones suffer. But God does give us profound signs of hope, and we find those signs in Jesus Christ. We see hope in Jesus Christ on the basis of his life. The testimony concerning Jesus in the Gospel of John is this. In him was life, and the life was the light of people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. His whole life was a life of love. He said, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Jesus showed us what God is like. God is creator, and God is love. And so Jesus showed us what our human life should be like, that our lives are meant to be filled with creativity and love. Because Jesus made known to us this kind of life, we can have a profound hope. We see hope in Jesus on the basis of his death. The world has known no greater tragedy than the death of our Lord and Savior. And at that moment in history, the full force of human sin and rebellion against God was unleashed in all its terror. And yet the Son of God accepted it and out of it cried, Father, forgive them. And these are the greatest words ever spoken. We are forgiven. And God has loved us beyond all measure and has taken away the power of sin and death. And because of this, we can cry out with Paul, for I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor things present nor things to come, nor power nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And by his own death, Jesus brought down the sin and erased the guilt that separated us from the Father. And also the death of Jesus Christ gives us hope because he has prepared the way for us and has prepared a place for us. Our Lord is, is one who's been through what we will all face, but we do not face it alone because Christ will be there to welcome us home. We can't see exactly what lies uh, beyond this uh, earthly existence, but we do see Christ. And as I said, he has gone before us, and as he declared to his disciples, he has prepared a place so that we might live with him and he with us. And so as we pass through the night of death, we can have the confidence that he who is the light of the world is with us. And we can pray with the psalmist, even though I pass through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. But the greatest hope we have in Jesus Christ comes in his resurrection. Although he suffered the pain and anxiety of death, he came out the victor. He conquered death once and for all, not just for himself, but for all of us. And death no longer then has its sting. It's no longer decisive. And so instead of death, we can celebrate the glory of an Easter morning and can proclaim in joy that Christ is risen. And we know that because he lives, 
CC lives, and we all will live. And so it is today that we can proclaim with confidence that Cecilia Ann Schumann, who has departed from us, in reality is even more alive than we are. And this is the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. At this time, I'd like to invite you to share your memories of CC. And if you're able, I would invite you to please come to the microphone here um, on the side. Um, we are recording this service um, so that we can um, have it available for the family. But certainly, if, if, if you're not comfortable um, speaking through a microphone, you can certainly stand um, where you're seated and speak. So I'd invite any of you who have special memories of CC to share those now. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for coming today. It's good to see all of you. A good bit of us here knew Cece very well, but some of us are just getting to know her story, some of my friends and family from this church. I hope to give you just a small peek into her life because each of us here could have told a different story. Today, you get one of the middle daughters perspectives and any others who want to share. Cece was born in the fall of 1939 at the tail end of the Great Depression. She was the daughter of Elton Going and Ruth Liberco and the oldest of four children. Marie, the next oldest, could not be here today because of health, but we are so happy that George, Mark, and their families are here today. I'm very glad all of my five siblings are here today. From the oldest to the youngest, we have Jimmy and we have Jean, Marie, Dan, Robbie, and Julie. Mom had two miscarriages, so we have another couple siblings we don't quite get the opportunity to meet just yet. A little history about mom. She was born in Washington, D.C., but she grew up in Glen Carbon, Illinois, a small coal mining town just outside of St. Louis. Her father, Elton Going, was a journeyman and a machinist, as well as a lifelong volunteer fireman. Cece's mom was Ruth Liberco, a devout Catholic and a college graduate who held a college degree in education, which was really quite rare in that day. I came to learn last night that uh, Ruth came from Prussian royalty of sorts. I always wondered why mom thought she should be served. <laughs> and she reminded me of the queen of our house, kind of. Um, but that's probably where it came from. Question answered, thank you. <laughs> Mom's childhood was quite different than what we know today. On the side porch of her home was a hand pump they used to get water for the house in the early years. I was reading in Mom's, um, her diary, okay, and she left it, she didn't burn it or anything, so. I assume that that meant it was okay for me to read. It was when she was 18. And she had left a story in there about when she uh, was helping her mom go up the hill. And this is when they lived in a different, a different apartment. And they had to, to walk up a hill to a pump and then carry it back down to their apartment. And she asked her mom if she could help, you know, carry the water. And grandma, of course, let her very cautiously say yes but pay attention you know to what you're doing so just as they were on their way down a fire engine or something went by and you know that took the attention right off the water and down she went and you know face plant anyway uh she got in a little bit of trouble for that but um <laughs> she t her mom said shh you're gonna wake up marie <laughs> And then my mom, really mad. <laughs> anyway, um, I digress. Uh, 
um, us kids had a lot of fun playing with that water pump on the back porch. In a beeline from the back porch was an outhouse. And I only recently learned that it was Grandpa Elton that installed their first modern kitchen and bathroom in that home. Mom went to an elementary school that was right across the street. Once, uh, one she was not allowed to cross by herself until she was 18, or so she told us. <laughs> Her world was a lot smaller than many of us experience today. Luckily, as kids, she let us roam a block or two from our childhood house to play and even walk to the local grocery store with our older siblings, who, as far as Dan is concerned, would get us into more trouble than keep us out of it. <laughs> Mom was a good baker and a master organizer. She could fit more <laughs> stuff <laughs> in one room than anyone I know. One of my fondest memories from childhood was the three-leaf clover cake she would make for my birthday. Since my birthday was close to St. Patrick's Day, it was fashioned from three heart-shaped cakes and a stem, smothered in green frosting and big enough that we all got at least two pieces before it was gone, which says something for all these kids. I was thankful for St. Patrick even though I had no idea who he was. My favorite was mom's homemade bread, toasted with butter, it would melt in your mouth, as would her pie crusts from the many pies she made. Rhubarb pie was one of her favorites, and we would grow it in the garden out back. Mom had a sweet tooth for sure. I'm sure the first thing I will hear from mom on the other side is, I'm in trouble for not letting her have that last donut. We went to church on Mother's Day and had brought home one of the extra donuts. That evening, after dinner, she wanted to eat it, but was having pain in her mouth, which I thought was from thrush, and I had to ask her to wait until morning as I thought the sweets would wor worsen her symptoms. Later that night, in the emergency room, and again the next day, I was getting a hard time about the donut I wouldn't let her have. Mom's world was family, friends, faith, and food. Not necessarily in that order, and not really different from the core of many of our own lives. She had hobbies and excelled at sewing. She sewed us dresses as young girls and made both mine and Robbie's prom dresses. Did she make yours, Julie? Okay, sorry. Maybe you're I thankful. Was a okay. <laughs> <laughs> Julie got the hand me down. Um, she tried to teach me that, um, but it was an epic fail on my part. I was too impatient at the time and too active to sit behind a sewing machine for very long. Mom's preferred method of com communication was letters. She did email for a time, but in time, computers and software um, proved too much for her to keep up with. She used the computer like a printing press, and I mean that literally. <laughs> All of her life, she would send out group letters to our family and friends. As we grew up and began receiving these letters, we would often cringe <laughs> at what she was sharing with extended family and friends. Amen. All the dirty little secrets. Mm -hmm. As we gathered for reunions and mom wasn't in the room, we would make fun of the sibling or the person she embarrassed in the last <laughs> most recent letter. Mom would share way too much. But I have to say those letters provided a lot of laughs over the years and endless dirt on our siblings. <laughs> you could say mom was a bit on the emotional side and this is how she processed life. It was rare to get a call from mom on the phone as this was an expensive means of communication when we were young and that kind of stuck with her. Whenever I got a call, I was certain there was something serious going on in the family and was usually right. Mom worked several full-time and part-time jobs as we got older, but this was more about necessity than desire. She was always happiest as a wife, a mother, and a homemaker. 
Sundays in our house were all about church. And as we became teenagers, we dreaded the early wake-up calls. Only after I was older did I appreciate how hard that must have been for her to continue to make this a steadfast part of our lives. The gift that stems from her steadfastness, this thing you can't see, you can't taste, you can't smell, or holding your hands was the gift of faith what I'm most thankful for this faith has steadied and guided me through good times and bad and it was through the bad times that this gift was most appreciated as it sustained me through much adversity and help me to learn some of life's most important lessons. Tissue, please. <laughs> All right. Even as she experienced brokenness in her own life through divorce, she was able to shield us from this as kids. Not just her, but all the parents. Dennis, Jim, Judy. They were incredible parents. Amicable, loving, kind, and gentle with each other. They turned what could have been a broken family into one bigger, loving, caring, sharing family. And this is no small feat. It set the best kind of example to us kids and is a lesson to each one of my siblings. And they can attest to that. This is very uncommon in today's world. And I hold them up and thank them for making that happen. The other most, most precious gift came from God. Scratch. Um, the other most precious gift mom gave to all of us is each other. I'm so grateful for this big family, for all of the siblings and all of the parents. My siblings mean the world to me. They are all unique, talented, passionate, loving people each beautiful in their own special way. They're as different as the stars above, but connected invisibly and steadfastly to one another. Thank you, Mom, for my siblings. They make this world a better place, a more loving place to be, and I would be lost without them. Mom, I miss you dearly. But I know in a little while we will all be reunited and you can count on me to bring the donuts. <laughs> Cease was the oldest of the four of us, and in late 1988, four of us gathered for the first time in probably 20 years in the same location to uh, commemorate 
our up our parents' upcoming 50th wedding anniversary. And we all talked about our childhood, and of the four of us, Cease was the one who remembered childhood as happy and full of love and full of fun. She spent her life trying to pass that on to the rest of the world. And she did a terrific job. She could be a stern disciplinarian, as I'm sure her yes. children remember. But she could also process love and caring and knowledge that you yourself were valued and loved. She had no problem incorporating my oldest son into her family, and she has left behind wonderful contributors to this world. All six of you, my son, all of your children, I congratulate you all and you are a true example of what my sister hoped to leave to the world. Love you all. I can't follow either of those, but um, in, in our tradition, um, we always read this psalm at this time. So if you would turn with me in your books to page 415. Psalm 23. And let's read together. We'll wait for stuff. Thank you. <laughs> We're not going to rush through this. You're in the Bible, right? Yeah, but it's not oh, it's a different Bible. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I got. Okay. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. other memories? Yes. I'm very sorry for your loss, everybody. I'm kind of represented, representing the latest family CC belonged to here in our church, and uh, it was so nice to get to meet Cece. First of all, just by her presence alone, 
she increased the attendance by 20% in our church. So this is quite an attendance mark. You know? <laughs> <laughs> You know, we did not know her for very long. Uh, but now today, as I see this, I understand how come Michelle has two mothers, three fathers, 14 grand. I mean, <laughs> I mean every time we would pray for a parent, we know it was the biological parent, the other parent, but they were all your parents. And, and, and that was a beautiful family. And thank you for being here today. We did not know her very well or very much. And, uh, but as you, you see in the Bible, some of the shortest interactions can be very consequential. You know, obviously Jesus Christ with us three years, and David, with how long he lived. But some of the shortest, shortest uh, interactions were with angels. And he would come at you, knock on the door, say something, then be gone. And for us, I think Cece was something like this. You know, she came in over the last year. We saw her a few times on Sunday, some special power, sometimes for dinner. But she always had that beaming, wonderful smile. And she always had good words to say about things, you know, I mean, about people, about everything. She never had any bitterness, you know. She, even when she was in pain and everything else, she was smiling. And uh, I'm just glad she did not know me long enough to put me in her letters. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> she would have had probably lots of material there. So, uh, so just thinking of you guys, praying for you and for us. We love you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. plenty of time downstairs in the fellowship time to share those stories and I'm sure that as you gather um, afterwards and for years to come you're going to have many many stories. Is there anyone else before we move on? Let us stand and sing hymn number 276, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
O God of grace, you have given us new and living hope in Jesus Christ. We thank you that by dying, Christ destroyed the power of death, and by rising from the grave, opened the way to eternal life. Help us to know that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, shall be able to separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Especially, we thank you for your servant, Cece, whose baptism is now complete in death. We praise you for the gift of her life, for all in her that was good and kind and faithful, for the grace you gave her that kindled in her the love of your dear name and has enabled her to serve you faithfully. We thank you that for her death is past and pain ended, and that she has now entered the joy you have prepared in Christ Jesus. Holy God, by your creative power, you gave us life, and in your redeeming love, you have given us new life in Christ. We commend C.C. to your merciful care in the faith of Christ our Lord, who died and rose again to save us, and who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Hear us now as we pray the prayer Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now the peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit remain with you always. Amen. You are all invited to a reception in the Fellowship Hall where you can continue to share your memories of CC. I invite you now to sit down because we, uh, Michelle told me that um, CC enjoyed Light Elvis. So we have an Elvis song for her. <laughs>
to you, CC. What's that?